Hi everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Pankaj Dhingra, a proud FinTrammer and the faculty for Strategic Business Reporting Exam. Welcome, welcome friends, welcome to the FinTram Revision Bootcamp for Strategic Business Reporting Exam. We are now getting on to the arena, my friend, to touch upon the questions. But before we really go in there, what is that that we really need to do today is we have to touch upon the current issues. Strategic business reporting exam is a unique exam. It basically not only tests you as to how do you really know about the various IFRSs and their application, but they also want you to know what exactly is happening as far as the current affairs are concerned in the IFRS arena. You being the strategic business reporting guy, are not only expected to know what is there in the current IFRSs and of course their application onto various scenarios, but you're also expected to know as to what all is happening in the industry and how the things are changing from the IFRS reporting standpoint. That may mean that these changes may not be the freeze changes from the standpoint of an IFRS, so that they're not, they're not like the real IFRSs into life right now at this point in time, but these are more of the exposure drafts that are really coming your way and may become an IFRS as we go forward. Examiner loves to test you, my friend, that do you really know as to what is happening in the industry and considering the change that is happening in the industry, how the international reporting standards are about to change, what all are the things that are being discussed, that are being proposed and so on and so forth. And that is what we'll be covering over here in these current issues because there are current issues that are very much specific to various exams that you may get to see and these are the areas which we would be discussing. Examiner has a very different way of asking these current issues. He may give you a situation wherein he would give you a scenario that somewhere would correlate to what all changes are happening in the industry on which exposure draft has already been issued. You are expected to know that exposure draft and give back the examiner some kind of understanding of that exposure draft over there considering that you have seen, you have known, you have understood that exposure draft and considering the scenario, considering the changes that are happening in the industry, you are aware that this may come your way as you may go forward. Hence, you are prepared for it and you are ready to give examiner exactly what that exposure draft really says. You should not be forgetting one thing, my friend, that these exposure drafts are just the drafts. They're not full-fledged IFRSs in themselves. Hence, they are still in the proposal stage. So whatsoever you would communicate in the exam, in that question, would be more in relation to the proposal that has been made by the ISAB. It is not more to do anything else with that. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Just, just ensure my friend that you're not missing on that because many of the times examiner would give you something like that and you really need to give back the examiner exactly in that particular, particular draft. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Should we now jump in and start off with the current issues? Yes, sir. Alrighty, let's go and jump in. Uh -uh. Sorry for interruption. But do you know what is the difference between you and the more aware version of you? Your more aware version would subscribe to our channel Fintram Global and press the bell icon. For keep getting these videos and these updates, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon right now. Moving on to the cryptocurrencies. Now this is certainly a current issue my friend that all of you may face if examiner gives you this in the exam. Cryptocurrencies we all know and one of the famous famous name for it is the Bitcoin. We all know is the fever of the season and many of the guys are really minting money and many of the guys are losing money also on the same in terms of they really investing on into the cryptocurrency and of course really taking the ride off. But as far as the accounting is concerned, there is no clear guidance as to how one should be really accounting for these, these cryptocurrencies, particularly because 
these cryptocurrencies have not been recognized by any central bank across the world. That is the reason my friend this the, the areas like this really becomes the current issues for you and if you really get to see anything in the exam you have to really apply your brain there and then in terms of how should you be dealing with it and that's what we'll be doing my friend there is a separate technical article that is being issued on the cryptocurrencies and it is there in your SBR study resources that you may get to see on the ACCA website I would urge all of you to really go there and read that I really want you to discuss some topics over here in regard to this cryptocurrencies that you may and you should really know before you release it for exam and that is the reason I have it over here that I really want to talk on as the part of current issues is that clear yes sir should we go and check in as to what we have absolutely sir cryptocurrencies cryptocurrencies are the virtual currencies bitcoins yes sir they provide the holder with various rights and we have seen that they are not issued by the central authority any central bank across the world so exist outside of the governmental control this is a big time issue my friend since you do not have any regulatory control over these currencies they really become a big time issue for the people who are investing into it all right cryptocurrencies such as the bitcoin can be used to purchase some goods and services although they are not yet widely accepted like the other currencies that we use all right sir the market value is extremely volatile we all know that people are making huge gain and losses too and some investors make high returns through short-term trade the accounting treatment of the cryptocurrencies is not clear-cut you should certainly know that and if you get to see something like this in the exam you should certainly point out that too is that clear yes sir Cryptocurrencies do not constitute cash because they are cannot be readily exchanged for the goods and services. Moreover, they cannot qualify as cash equivalent in accordance with the IS7, the statement of cash flows. You should certainly know that you cannot classify them as cash because IS7 currently do not cover cryptocurrencies the way they have defined the cash and cash equivalents. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Because they are subject to a significant risk of the change in value that is one of the reason you cannot constitute them as the cash and cash equivalents is that clear yes sir an investment in cryptocurrencies does not represent an investment in equity of another entity or a contractual right to receive cash and so does not meet the definition of financial asset as per is 32 financial instrument you really need to know this my friend Many of the time examiner may give you something like this and tries to confuse you as to how you would be accounting for these kind of things or he may ask your opinion that how should you be doing that. In that case, you should know what exactly can be the right treatment and I can tell you one thing or one guru mantra that you all need to know is that in that case the conceptual framework really comes to your rescue. You have to apply the basic logic of the conceptual framework to really decide on that. The specific things that are being spoken out over here are really to be kept in mind because he may try to confuse you that can you really categorize that as cash? Nope, sir, we cannot do that. Can you really categorize that as the financial asset as per IS 32? No, sir, we cannot do that, sir. We know that, sir. We have read this, sir. We have been trammed, sir. We are completely aware that this cannot, cannot be you know, considered as a cash or the financial asset. I'm loving you, my friend that's what the approach you need to have that's how you should be thinking of in the exam when it gives you something like that is that clear yes sir the most applicable accounting standard would appear to be is 38 intangible asset please note this because cryptocurrencies is an identifiable non-monetary asset without physical substance if I really have to ask you without you know reading this and without knowing this, it is very difficult for us to really construe in our mind as to how one would be really accounting for these assets because none of the accounting standard right now clarifies that. If that is the case, you would apply the logical common sense onto it considering the conceptual framework and then decide what is the right way of really approaching that and that is nothing but the IAS. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Although 
cryptocurrencies most likely fall within the scope of IS-38. The measurement model in that standard does not seem appropriate as of now. The fair value of cryptocurrency is volatile, so the cost-based measure is unlikely to provide the relevant information. If you give something like this to the examiner, that you understand what the cryptocurrencies are and you understand what the IS-38 is all about and you're able to apply your mind in terms of, you know, what really works well and what really doesn't. Examiner is super happy, my friend, to give you the full marks and that's what we're really aspiring for. Is that clear? Yes, sir. The revaluation model in IS-38 initially seems more appropriate, but this requires gain on the re-measurement to fair value to be presented in the other comprehensive income, which is not the case with the investors. Many entities invest in cryptocurrencies to benefit from the short term changes in the fair value and the gain or losses on the short term investments are normally recorded in PL asset inside the scope of IFRS 9, that is financial instruments. That is one of the conflicting view that you may have over there in terms of how should you be recognize the gains from the cryptocurrency standpoint. As can be seen, the accounting treatment of the cryptocurrencies is not straightforward. We know that in the absence of an appropriate accounting standard, preparers of the financial statement should refer to the principle in the existing IFRS standard as well as the conceptual framework in order to develop an accounting policy. So you may want to draft an accounting policy that takes some benefit or some aspect of IS-38 and really really saying as to how you should be recognizing the P and L from the same. Considering the conceptual framework, if you really mention things out over there to the examiner, that one, of course, you know the cryptocurrencies at large in terms of the concept, then you understand that there is no clear-cut IFRS that really spokes on that, then you know that which, which IFRS can be more relatable to it, considering that it cannot be a cash and considering that it cannot be a financial asset, we know that, sir, considering that it would be an intangible asset as per IS-38, but there are still some nuances to it, which one would really need to take care and basis that if you advise the management, you are completely there from the understanding of this current issue standpoint. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Was that difficult? These current issues are not difficult, my friend. These actually are the real-time scenarios that really wants you to think like a strategic business reporting guy and take the right decision in the right manner. Is that clear? Yes or no? That's what I wanted to cover in this cryptocurrencies. I'll see you again in the next one, taking on another current issue. Till then, this is Pankaj Tingra signing off. Thank you.